ponder on this scripture text for a while and throughout the week, God was confirming it by different people I would speak uh, with as it relates to the scripture. And throughout this morning, the Holy Spirit, the choir sung this song. My wife did the uh, partial announcements. <laughs> and some of my, I wonder if she had my uh, text this morning. But everything is in line. God always does things for a purpose. Amen? Amen. Let me first start off by giving praise and honor to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. To our pastor, Pastor Jerry Waters. Thank you, brother. To the ministers on the roster. Bless you guys. To the deacons. To the church as a whole. May God bless you. Amen? Amen. I'm going to ask as I present God's word to you that you pray for me and with me. Amen? that God would allow me to present what he had given me unto you. So as you are being edified, God is truly being glorified. Amen? Amen. Before I get started, let me just have my wife, Michelle, and my daughters, Jasmine, Brandon, and Madison, to stand. <laughs> Both of my oldest daughters, they're back home from college. They flew back together. And the Lord would have it, they, they hear it, they hear my sermon. Amen? Amen? And let me have my extended family stand up, my father-in-law, my mother-in-law, and the rest of my family. Now I'm going to start calling names, but everybody, thank you. Amen. Amen. Let's get into the word this morning. Amen? Amen. I'm going to ask that you turn to Matthew, the first chapter, verse 18. And guess what? It was read this morning. Amen? Amen? So we're going to read the first chapter, starting at the 18th verse, all the way through the 25th, the last verse. So bear with me, being that you've heard it read this morning, we're going to read it again just for the sake of the text. Amen? Amen. 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on the wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophets, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took, him, and took unto himself his wife, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and, and he called his name Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. Let me offer a word of prayer. Oh, gracious and most eternal Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your darling son Jesus, dear God. We thank you for his birth. We thank you for his death. We thank you for his resurrection, dear God. Dear God, as we prepare to embark upon your word, reveal your truths to us through your word, dear God. We may truly understand who you are through your word, that we may get a great understanding as to who you are as we go further in this service. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. Okay, you don't have to stand up for this, but I'm going to ask that you, those who want to follow along, we got to go back to the beginning. Everything started at the beginning. Uh, Genesis, the second chapter. I'm going to read one verse. I'm not going to go through the whole 
book, just one verse, uh, verse 16, because I got to make sure we have enough time to really present the word. So verse 16, and the Lord commanded the man. What he did to the man? He commanded the man. Was that an ultimatum? All right, just what, we got to make sure we understand that. God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But, well, we're going to read a couple of them here. But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of. That means no eating. All right? For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Right? All right, now, I'm going to ask that you turn to chapter 3, and I'm going to read 1 through 7. Now, the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, had God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Sideboard. Be careful who you have in your ear. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden. Look, here's a conjunction here. But, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God had said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Uh, she had her own words in there. All right. Four. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God do know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods. Notice the little g. Knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave it unto her husband with her. And he did eat. Stop right there. Stop right there. Brianna and Chris, come here. I need you to hurry up. Okay, we have Eve. Over here, Chris. And we have Adam. Everything starts from the beginning and everything ends from the beginning. Revelation starts in the beginning. God always do things from the end to the beginning. All right. So, we just read, he gave Adam a command. Y'all read, I, I, I had you to read it, right? He gave Adam a command. Now, I ask you, was that an ultimatum? Or was that something he was supposed to do according to God? All right. To the man. That means he had leadership. He was to take care of the garden and anything in the garden, including Eve. He had responsibility for Eve as well. So, Eve had the serpent to be in her ear. Jenna would thus say the Lord according to his saying, not what God said, and she had her own two bits in there as well. But the fruit was desirable, so she ate it. Nothing happened. But when she bit off it and gave it to this man, who is the leader. Stop right there. Verse 7. I need my glasses, y'all. <laughs> yeah. All right. So verse 7 now. Now Eve have it. Uh, Adam have it. And the eyes... Well, i got to read 6 first so you can go back and understand it. 
And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit, she took the fruit, remember? And did eat. She, she ate. Nothing happened. And gave also to her husband with her. Right? And the eyes of them both were opened. That's after Adam ate. And they knew that they were naked. And they sewed the fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. All right, so after he ate, the eyes were open. Who can read this? So now they're sinners. There wasn't a sinner after she ate. When he ate, they became sinners, right? Sin fell on mankind. So I got to show you why the baby Jesus had to be born. From the beginning, Adam, who is a sinner now, cannot produce a seed that is not sinful. So it need a perfect man to die for a holy God. All right, y'all sit down. Thank you. <laughs> now let's get in the story of Jesus. Let's get in the story now, amen? Why would God place a tree in the middle of the garden and then forbid Adam to eat of it? God wanted Adam to obey, but he gave him freedom to choose a free will, amen? When faced with choices, Choose to obey God. You know, we sometimes are hard on Adam and Eve because of the mistake they did in the beginning. But God gave you the same choices today. And you don't do no different. But we want to talk about Adam and Eve because sin fell upon the world. But I have news for you. All of you guys are sinful. Even me. I don't, I, you know, I, I don't want to not include me because I am a part of that. Because sin fell in the world. Jesus had to come and die to bring us back unto the Father. Amen? Amen? So you may be asking, why is the virgin birth important to Christians? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Jesus Christ, God's Son, had to be free from the sinful nature passed on to all human beings by Adam. Because he was born of a woman, he was a human being, but because he was the son of God, he was born without any trace of human sin. He was fully human and fully divine. Amen? So, when the Holy Spirit got with Eve and the angel told Eve she was going to conceive a child. Mary. Uh, yeah, thank you. Mary, who? <laughs> thank you, Petrie. You, you, you listen. Somebody listen to me. Thank you, Brother Petrie. Let me backtrack because I want to know about living. He said Eve was... When the Holy Spirit got with Mary, it had to be from God. It had to be. Because there was no other man that could conceive a child with a woman that was not sinful. God in the beginning always had us in mind. Ephesians, the first chapter, verses 4 through 5, tells us, according as he had chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus to himself, 
according to the good pleasure of his will. God always have a plan. I told you, he works backwards. We work from here trying to get to the end. He works from the end going forward. So he always had a plan. He knew man had a choice. But guess what? Just in case you don't choose me, I already know what the answer is going to be. This, this is in place already. God always have a plan. Romans 5 verse 12 tells us, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and debt by sin, and so debt passed upon all men through Adam, for that all have sinned. For until the law, sin was in the world. But sin is not imputed where there is no law. Oh, that's deep. 14. Nevertheless, debt reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the multitude of Adam's transgression. I mean, you may have not done the same sin he did, but, but being that he sinned, he the father of all humankind, you're sinful now. He is the figure of him that was to come. Adam was always a figure as an example of Jesus. Some people say Jesus is not in the Old Testament, but Jesus was always in the Old Testament. He was always in the beginning. Even when they say the slain lamb, when the, the Israelite had to slam a, a lamb every year for the atonement of the people, the sins of the people, Jesus was always, the, the atonement was always pointing to Jesus, but the blood of the lamb was only temporary. The blood of the lamb was only temporary. blood of the lamb was only temporary. He said, without the blood, there's no remission of sin. Blood have life. So without blood shed, there's no remission of sin. No drinking now, no drinking. <laughs> Jesus came to wipe the blood away. Came to wipe the blood away. It's your blood. Jesus came to wipe the blood away. Another illustration here, just so you understand. Adultery, fornication, homosexuality. You can't wipe the blood away. His blood. Wash the sin away permanently. There's no sin unforgiven besides blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. And you know what that means? Is that you're going to die in your sin. You haven't accepted it. You're going to die in the state that you are. So once you die, that is it. But at your last breath, you still have a chance to accept it. Amen? How can we declare guilty? How can we be de declared guilty for something Adam did thousands of years ago? Many feel it isn't fair for God to judge us because of Adam's sins. Yet each of us confirm our heritage with Adam by our own sins every day. We have the same sinful nature and are prone to, to rebel against God and we are judged for the sins we commit because we are sinners. It isn't fairness we need, it's mercy. It's mercy. It's only by his mercy. 
you got to understand. I got to make sure you understand the big picture here. God is holy. And he would not be associated with sin. All people are sinful, and all sin deserve to be punished. Amen? Instead of punishing us with debt we deserve, however, Christ took our sins upon himself and paid the price for them with his own debt. Death of the cross. All our sins were nailed to the cross. Present, future, all was nailed to the cross. Now, I must share this with you, because sometimes we think we have a license to sin. Just because you are, are saved from your sins, that don't mean you have the right to go continue to sin. He said, God forbid. He said, be a light unto the world. And if we're going to be a light to the world, we must represent Christ at all times. Thank you, God. I was sharing this with the Bible study, with our Christian walk. I think sometimes we're going to talk about this enough. Christianity is not a religion. It's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. It's who you are. It's who you are every day. It should be who you're at home, when you go to work, when you come to church, when you go to school. It's a lifestyle. You can't put it on a shelf today and take it back tomorrow. But I've heard people say that, God, I'm, I'm going to take care of this. I'm going to put you on the side. I'm going to take care of this argument. No. It's a lifestyle. All right, let me hurry up here. All right. Romans 3, 24, 25. I'm trying to show you why he had to come. He came as a baby, but he died as a man for mankind. It was only through his blood. He came to reconcile us back unto the Father. Now, I showed you from the garden that Adam and Eve sinned. And so mankind was sinful thereafter. And that's where we, we, we are today. That's why he say, Jesus said, I am the door. I'm the way. No man coming to the Father except by me. You don't come through Jesus Christ. You ain't getting there. You know, some people get, get mad and they get offended when you talk about God uh, as the only living God, true God. But it is what it is. As I shared before, we can pray in, we can pray in the name of Muhammad, Buddha, Hare Krishna, all these. It, it, it's no offense. But when you say Jesus Christ, oh, you can't pray in that name. So it's offensive to some. Romans 3, 24, 25. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that, in, that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood. It had to be the blood. I told you, blood have life. To declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. Justified freely. Simply means to declare not guilty. Since Jesus died and, and, and he's the perfect one, now you've died in him, now his righteousness is imputed to you. Meaning that it's given to you. Not because of what you've done. None are righteous, only he is righteous. But now that he is righteous, he's given his right, righteousness to you as his. Amen? So he, he says... He says, none good. No, not one. You know, before I came into God, and I used to be approached by people who were, were saved and uh, Christians, and they used to ask me to come to church and accept Christ, and I'm good, I'm good, I don't do nobody harm, I'm, I'm, I'm righteous. 
just as crazy. <laughs> you know, I, I can say it to myself, y'all. I, I can say that. But, but you still have people out there with that same mentality, that same idea of thought. But that's why we have to teach them. Teach them the word of God. Amen? But he said that there's none good. There's no righteousness in us apart from him. So he said, when they, as an example, when a judge in a court of law declares the defendant not, not guilty, all the charges are removed from his record. Amen? Legally, it is as if the person had never been accused. Not guilty. Not guilty. When God forgives us of our sins, our record is wiped clean. It is as though we never sinned. But it don't give you a right to go around sinning. Amen? Now, I must, I must share this with you. You may know this already. There's consequences for our actions. Good consequence, and it's bad consequence. He gave you a free will, right? right? So you choose what those consequences are going to be. Amen? Now, I'll tell you this. You can have two little kids, two toddlers there, and you don't, you don't have to even teach them how to be selfish. If you give one a toy, the other one will say it's mine because the sinful nature is in them. You don't have to teach them, Brother Mattis. It's there already. The residue is there. So, the time is rolling, so I'm going to do this here. I'm going I'm going to say what Paul say. I got to share what, what Paul, Paul, Paul tells us uh, here. Turn with me to Romans 7. I'm going to let that be my, my last scripture uh, verse. Verse 7. No, uh, chapter 7, sorry. Chapter 7, verse 18 and 20. Now, this, this is Paul, the great apostle. And I'm sure we find ourselves in the same situation. Verse 18. He said, for I know that, that in me, that is in, in my flesh. He's talking about in his flesh. He said, I know that what is in me. Well, no good thing. Hallelujah. Now, now I, gotta, I must tell you again, this is Paul the Apostle. For to will is present with me. He said, I want to do right. Sister uh, May, I want to do right, Mel. He said, but look, let me say, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. For the good that I would, I do not. He said, I want to do good, but I choose to sin. You know, it's as a choice there. But the evil which I would not do, that I do. I don't want to do evil, but, but I find myself doing it. 20. Now if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwell in who? Me. In me. He say, forgive me, God, I want to do right, but, but I find myself doing wrong. But it's not me, God. I'm, I'm trying to work on this. He said, but, but it's a sin. Me and Dr. Hale always talk about this, and we always go back to the scripture. He said, sin is pleasurable. But Dr. Haley, what? Only for a season. Because you will have to pay the piper. Sin is pleasurable. You know, Satan knows how to package it. He knows your weakness. You know, if you love the drink, he's he going to put it out there. You, you love women, he's going to put it out there. If you love men, he's going to put it out there. You love money, cars, shopping women, oh, uh, shopping. Uh, he's not to put it out there, Pastor. He's not to put it out there. But he just, guess what? He can't make you do anything. But he can present it so well that he, look, God said, whenever you're tempted, there's a door that's always open. But sometimes that shopping, that, that, that drinking gets so good that you don't want to go through that door. You know, 
This is the word. You know, we have to be true to ourselves. You know, they tell you for alcoholics, all of you to get clean, you got to want to do it. You got to admit that you're alcoholic. But as long as you're saying, oh, I'm, a, I'm okay, I'm cool, the young people say, I'm Gucci. <laughs> really? Yeah, you know, so same, same with, with, with God. You got to want him. We're going to end right here with his closing scripture. Romans 5.23 For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Jesus Christ is the only way. He is the door. He's John 3.16 Somebody help me quote it. I know we, we all should know that. Amen. God bless you. Give Ricky another hand. Clap. The doors of the church has always been open. Amen. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I know they said December 25th he was born, and we heard it from Ricky wife earlier that it's the fullness of his time. But we need to find like they say, examine ourselves. Michael Jackson say, look in the mirror. I'm telling you, examine yourself. He's in your heart. This is that time of the year that we have to pump our brakes and get ready for Jesus. But we're supposed to always stay ready. Stay ready, we don't have to get ready, amen. That's why being in his word, I know it's spelled Christmas, but Christ must be in your life. Christ must be in your home. Christ must be on your job. Christ must be in the car when you drive. At the park, at the mall. Must let your light shine because people will watch and examine. He says, Not for play, play. Jesus came down here strictly to take care of business. He ain't played not one time in the Bible. Now it's time to take care of business. We love him. What a great message. Says in John 14, said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am life. No man coming. So we have to show the world Jesus Christ to us. Thank God for those months that He's been with us this year. So we got to get ready for next year. It's nothing like 2020. 2020. Thank God for this 19. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for the message. Thank you for the reminder. You know it's a calendar that always reminds us. But we should know who I said. Amen. Let's go to the Lord. Father God, I want to thank you for showing us in your word today, Ricky, the Heavenly Father. Father God, you said study to show ourselves approved unto you. The work for you, not being ashamed, but right to provide the truth. Thank you for the truth today. Thank you how it was right formed in your pattern, the Heavenly Father. Father God, continue to let us meditate on your word day and night. You say in Psalm 1, and don't take it to no place. We thank you for coming down here, showing us the way. They tripped out with Adam, and you came as a second Adam, Father God, to show us the way. 
Father God, continue to order our steps, order our thoughts, and prepare us for 2020. We thank you so much, Father God.